you know, it's always awesome when you, when we talk about the winners and these great solutions, but to get a context of kind of what they were up against. So what you were actually asking of them and the problem that they're wanting to solve. So it lays a really great foundation and um, sets the tone and really helps to understand a lot of the work and the thought that went into all of these solutions that these guys actually presented. Um, I love to ask this question. Anybody from the NASA team can jump in, but um, you know, tell me how you compare the experience of using the competition versus typical route of product design. Somebody's going to jump in or I'll well, on you guys. Well, for <laughs> us, um, this is very different. This is the first time for uh, the JPL team, this, this JPL team, and Kevin's very experienced from the NASA side, but on the mm -hmm. JPL side, this was a new experiment for us and it's much, much faster. Mm -hmm. Usually to get to this point, it takes a number of years, sometimes even a decade, and here we're doing it in six months or something. So uh, the pace that the development is occurring is much more rapid and it's very exciting. Well said. That's always exciting to hear. Um, NASA team, is there anything else you guys want to add as it relates to the scope of the project? I think Saba, you did a fantastic job. So that's good. All right. So um, for this challenge, there were nine winning teams across two categories. So in addition, there were three honorable mentions. Um, with us today are the, are the top winning teams from the lunar resource potential category and the lunar environment category. So, um, Andrew, as I understand, they're both technically first place winners, correct? Yes, that is correct. We um, we selected the objectives of the teams uh, of in several different categories based on the background from the lunar studies that are going on at NASA headquarters. And NASA headquarters identified several areas of interest for this particular challenge. And we thought for the, uh, that would fit the, this kind of payload, we felt that the lunar resources and the lunar environments were the two areas that we thought uh, would be the most appropriate. And we have first place winners for each of those areas. Wonderful, makes sense. So um, to put things into perspective for our audience, the number, the total number of submissions uh, was 132. So um, Andrew, do you have any initial thoughts around, um, you know, the, as to how many submissions you thought you were actually going to get? Well, that was a, it's a great question. We had no idea. I think the Hero X folks probably had a better feel than, than we did uh, at JPL. Um, I was thinking maybe we would get 25 or 50 or something. So the number of submissions way exceeded our expectations. And certainly in the top tier, the quality of the, the say the top 30 or 40 submissions was really outstanding. We, we had a hard time selecting them in general. I have to say, though the selection of the winners, the number one on each area was very clear. It, mm. it was clear that these two teams were stood well above the rest. You know, that's, it's an interesting comment you make because I hear that a, a fair bit when I have conversations afterwards is um, that they're blown away sometimes by the quality of the submissions. And so many sponsors have a really difficult time um, selecting the winners, but as you mentioned, it's usually oftentimes really clear who the actual winners are. And um, with that segue, let's uh, put you guys on the, the, the hot seat, shall we? No, we'll just, it's all about highlighting you guys today. So let's learn a little bit more about the soft facts behind these really great winning